yes. That's how we have to be about our goals. If you really want to see something come to fruition, you do until you demonstrate. Great quote by Ernest Holmes. Do until you demonstrate. We don't stop until we see the results. We don't stop until we see the change in our condition. And if you still ain't seeing the change, then maybe go work your rework your plan. Go pick up some more, more tools. Go surround yourself with even more impressive, powerful, uh, motivating, inspiring people. Keep surrounding yourself with the things that you need It may take you two months, it may take you two years, it may take you 20 years. Do until you demonstrate. That's when you know you've done it all. Things that make you go, you know, these aren't jokes, these are thoughts, these are things that make you say... They seem terrible, but my God, I didn't know you were black. Touchy situation, but I think that we can approach it with some some serious class, uh, with love, um, and with hopefully an open enough mind uh, that we can actually create a dialogue that speaks to racial healing around the holidays. We have had an ugly scab opened up with the leadership in this country. And a lot of people who may have even been closeting their um, uh, emotions and, and things that they feel about another race um, uh, could be hiding, you know, behind all of that. Um, but to have an open and classy and hopefully, a, um, mm, 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 what's, a, what's a good word? An intelligent conversation about it could really open up uh, some healing and we could take this to our friends and family and, and spread from there, right? Grassroots healing. So, hey, y'all, how you doing? Welcome to the conversation, right? Racial healing. What a concept. We about to get in it. Mm. <laughs> and I don't think about, and I don't like to revisit pain. If you read my post, you'll see that I said the same thing yesterday. I don't like to revisit pain unless it serves a purpose. 
If it doesn't serve a purpose, it's like reopening a scab and not allowing it to heal. But if you're not, if you're only treating symptoms of symptoms of something and not going to the root cause, then you might always just be treating a symptom and never really doing real healing. And that's why I think the Legacy Museum was created. I will be honest with you and tell you that I didn't necessarily know. I, I was going to go just because it's been erected and I believe in, 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 in supporting things of that nature. But I was like, well, how do we allow ourselves to heal if we keep talking, uh, if we don't let people, like, for example, if a black person feels like, you know, a white person really has remorse about the, 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 the brutalization and the things that have happened to the black culture in this country, if we have that conversation but we don't allow ourselves to forgive on a certain level, how, how does it help to keep revisiting the pain? But what I I go I got exposed to another layer of my thoughts behind that right and it was like you know what first we got to actually do the real acknowledging of what happened and that may start in our history books with our kids instead of fluffing over it or trying to make it nice and pretty maybe we need to open that scab in a way that that shows you the real pain allows us to connect right with the real pain so that another layer of humanity comes out. And because another layer of humanity in each of us gets exposed, we do real healing and we get to real social justice because you say, you know what? No, this is what it really is. This is, system this is the result of systemic oppression, racial oppression. And, these, and this is what has happened to this culture. And if we don't go back and fix the laws, the things that this country was built on that, that sustains that systemic oppression, then we're always gonna be dealing with the symptoms instead of healing from the root out. That's just my thought right now. Okay, let me see what y'all are saying because this, this is gonna be a good one. Hey everybody, welcome to the conversation. Welcome to Morning Talks with Ro. Um, <laughs> good morning, y'all. I love it. Uh, thank you, Rhonda. Hey, Shirley. Hey, Shamika. Don't visit pain unless it serves a purpose. Bless up. Rhonda Seymour says, I just ate healthy and decided to love on myself and did not care who did not want to try my healthy dinner. Hello. What a concept. Loving on you. Doing you. Who's ready to do them? Do yourself. Honor yourself in 2019. We, we are days away, y'all. Ooh. When he says, hey, beautiful, I see you and hear you and send my love to you and your family. Thank you so much. I send my love to you and your family. Uh, happy holidays, everybody. We are closing out 2018 very soon. Uh, as I said, if you just joined the conversation, we've been talking about healing around the holidays. And we've spoken about healing and different aspects of healing. But, but we've never tackled something like racial healing, right? It's a very prevalent, very uh, here today thing but uh, a lot of us want to skirt around it because it's, it's a painful thing to visit and it's also something that forces us have to have to deal with our humanity on another layer layer right but if you deal with that if you struggle with pain it can bring out another layer of beauty in you that you have not discovered yet it can bring out another layer of beauty in our ability to relate and connect with others that you may not have discovered yet. Sometimes we run from pain, but it's exactly what we need to struggle with in order to bring out another layer of beauty in us. Struggling with pain can be a good thing if it's going to bring healing and change, much needed change. To go back to pain and turn it over and, and beat up on an old wound and not with purpose, yes, that can be problematic. But if we go back and we say, what's to be gained here? How can we learn from this? How can I expose, expose myself to more humanity, more love, more peace, more healing, more of the things that we say we desire? If we look for that in the pain, then what do we discover? Then what do we discover? Visiting the uh, Legacy Museum was like, uh, like I said, I, I, didn't, I, I was like, all right, well, let me go see why we, we erected this thing because I, how is looking at the pain uh, of the past in this way going to be helpful? Let me go see it. And I got it. I grasped it. You know what I'm saying? I went there, I saw the chains and the shackles and I'm thinking, think about the mental oppression that took place we see the physical right what about the spiritual and how that gets passed down through generations mindset uh the 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 the, the way that uh some of us discipline our children and people see it as abuse when in essence it may have been born out of a space of trying to protect our families i believe it totally was you trying to keep your kids in line so that they don't get taken from you 
You're trying to keep your kids in line so that they don't get killed in a space of uh, where you can't just freely and uh, openly express yourself like other human beings just based on your color. It's happening today. Look at look at look at the violence that we are exposed to via the videos that are coming out because of social media. It's been happening a whole the whole time. But I do think that that scab, that nasty, dying, uh, sleeping, if you will, racial giant, got awakened with the leadership that happened. And so now it's almost like the roaches came out when the lights came on, right? And so it, it reawakened pain. It reawakened anger. It reawakened what this country was built on. So if we don't go back and look at what that is, maybe it won't expose you to a certain level of, 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 of suffering and pain, anguish, oppression. And by being exposed to that, will it open up a layer of humanity in people that it hasn't opened up in them yet? Will it, because it opened up a layer of humanity in them, really bring about genuine change and real social justice because a part of you, the human part of you, a loving part of you has been exposed and opened up and, and brought out. You see, if you don't deal with it, then you can fluff over it. You can sweep it under a rug. You can, you can allow it to become like the telephone game. You ever heard of the telephone game where you say something, right? And, and, and depending on how the next person relays it to the next person, even vocal inflection can change the meaning, right? So now the next person is supposed to tell the next person changes it a little bit. Maybe you flip a word just because of the way you perceived it coming in. And if you do that over time, that's what can happen with history. And then if you fluff over and smooth over and gloss over and not make it as ugly as it was, then you don't deal with the humanity of it. And if you don't deal with the humanity of it, we don't get to real social justice and real change. Let's see what you're saying. Um, bless up, Michelle. Um, hey, Charles. <laughs> Thank you. Have a super blessed 2019 to you. Maurice Mack says it's good to remember the pain from the past. The Jews do it all the time. Right. Other other cultures have been allowed to do this more freely. But for whatever reason, uh, African-American culture has been suppressed um, in some ways from having it put out in front on Front Street. And, and this country, honestly, has been industrialized through slave labor. It's true has been industrialized, has been built on the backs of oppression. Now, that's not to say all of it, but a dang on majority of it. And when I went through that museum, not only from the exhibition, but also inside of the building, reading up on all of that history and, and how, it, how it grew to 400,000. I mean, just in the South, there were millions of slaves. And then we're dealing with, you're talking about physical slavery, but do we deal with the, the, the aspect of spiritual enslavement? What that meant to people's relationship with their creator. How that was haunted and daunting. How that was questioning, questionable and confusing. Have you dealt with, um, you know, not having an economic base? And because a lot of our children don't even have an economic base, we can't get them out of prison for a traffic infraction. You can't get them out of jail for a traffic infraction. That's not having an economic base. Why is that? Well, if you never had any wealth to begin with, See, we got to have a real conversation and it's possible if we're open, it's possible if we do it from a space of choosing, choosing to love, it's possible if we do, to, do it from a space of choosing peace within it. But sometimes you got to deal with the struggle, you got to deal with the anger, you got to deal with the stuff that comes with it in order to break through. But it's okay if we're looking at it from a, the space of let's heal from it, not let's run from it, act like it didn't happen, and then we really don't deal with the humanity of it, and then we don't get to real change or social justice. We still treat symptoms. We don't treat the root cause, right? I see what you're saying. Yes, I feel it's a privileged conversation like it's not a problem until it happens to you, right? Mm, speak on it, man. This is for me today for sure. Bless up, Rhonda. My daughter is questioning black history. Good, Michelle Brown. Let's question it. Struggling with pain can be a beautiful thing. It brings out a beauty in us um, on the other side of the pain, on the other side of the struggle. Look at what has happened to a black culture. Because of the struggle, look what it's birthed. And we still got a ways to go. But there are a lot of beautiful people that have come out of the struggle. A lot of beautiful families, a lot of beautiful hearts. Look at how we love from the struggle. 
Hey everybody, welcome to the conversation. This is Morning Talks with Ro. No, they do not teach this in schools to the degree with which, as a matter of fact, I don't remember learning about slave history much at all uh, in my particular curriculum coming up. Um, a lot of it was, was colonialism and European history. And even though it was still, uh, it had a, a violence within it, why not, if, if, if our history is going to be riddled with violence anyway, why not tell the whole truth? And it's going to breed a different generation of children and people because they're consciously aware of what really took place. And if, you, if you're consciously aware of what really took place, then maybe you'll operate from a different space within your heart and your mind. You see, that's the power of putting it in our history books, in my humble estimation. So that it opens up another layer of humanity. And then we deal with real change. We get real social justice because we're breeding different types of humans. Ooh, come on, y'all. Let's talk about healing around the holidays. Welcome to the conversation. Maurice Mack says, even though slavery was horrible, it's a blessing that we're in America. Yes, I think that we, we are a resilient people, Americans, period, anybody. We're resilient people, but black people in particular, yes, we, we're going to find the good, right? But we, we don't want to ignore what happens so that we breed a different kind of mindset so that we get real social change if we're really talking about liberty and justice for all, right? Right? So does anybody want to add to the conversation here about um, healing around the holidays as it pertains to racial divides, racial coming together, racial healing? We can have an intelligent and loving conversation, and I really think we could get somewhere with it. My main takeaway was put this stuff in the history books. Let's deal with the whole truth, the real truth, so that we breed different humans, we breed a different mindset, we open up another layer of humanity in them, and then we get people that come into to the justice system to actually do some real change, and we start to see real change, right? So it, it was encouraging for me, because I felt like, okay, now I see how I could be a part of the solution. Now I see how my dialogue can be shifted so that I can be a part of the solution. Because I'm always looking for, why am I visiting this pain? What's the purpose? Where can I gain purpose from it? I gain purpose, which is very powerful for me. Rhonda says, my college professor told our whole class that there would never be a black president. Wow. So imagine the trauma behind that statement. You know what I'm saying? So we're coming, we're breaking. People were like, I don't want to see our people in chains. We're breaking the chains from statements like that, that have been dispelled. So what, what next will we dispel from having a real dialogue and from pressing forward and from being a resilient people, from being a resilient nation? Right. Thank you for that. That's awesome. Thank you for that. Charles says, Crystal Cagley Stenbarger said that she wished she could have had a chance to meet you last in se uh, September. Uh, she said she'll catch you next time. Okay, bless up. Tell her I said hello. Uh oh sorry. Hey, Deacon Charles, welcome to the conversation, dear. Uh, Michelle Brown says, why are textbooks not providing the true picture? I ask my young daughters, why do we have to go on the internet to find out uh, our true history? They ask. Exactly. So maybe that's a petition that we do. Right? We say, hey, let's start putting the real history, the whole history of America and how it was industrialized, how it was founded. Let's put it all in the books so that kids are exposed.